Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at how alternators generate electricity to power the vehicle's electrical needs. Now, basically, what the alternator does is it converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. As you can see, we have a pulley here. It is a belt driven from the crankshaft. The crankshaft will be driving this, and by driving this, we can generate electricity. So, we can convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. So that is basically the function of this alternator. It converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. Now, in order to fully understand how alternators does this, well, first let's begin by talking about how electricity can be generated. Well, let's have a look at this copper conductor, for example. This is a very tiny copper coil, I mean a copper conductor. Now, this copper conductor, it is made up of millions and billions of electrons. Now, the very good thing about conductors, they have free electrons. There are electrons now that are randomly traveling through this conductor. Around their atom, electrons are revolving continuously in a random direction on this copper conductor atoms. Now, that is from your physics knowledge. You know that in every conductor, there are electrons. Now, those electrons are freely revolving around their atom. We have millions and billions of electrons in this tiny copper conductor. Now, there is one thing about copper. Now, there is one thing, one, there is one particular behavior that we wonder about electrons. Electrons, besides having electrical property, they also have tiny magnetic property which means encircling every electron there is a weak magnetic field now that is a basic in order to understand alternator function that is a basic key point remember this revolving encircling every electron there is a magnetism now that magnetism is very tiny Individually, every electron has some magnetism encircling it, but that magnetism is very weak. Besides, when there is no current flow through a copper conductor like this, those magnetisms, they cancel out because electrons are moving randomly in every direction. So, for example, if there are electrons that are revolving around their atoms in opposite direction, their magnetism will cancel out. So finally, this conductor has no magnetic property whatsoever. If there is no current flow through this copper conductor, then because the net magnetism of the electrons will cancel out, there is no magnetism to this conductor. But now the question is, what will happen when current starts to flow this, through this copper conductor? Now when current is flowing through this com copper conductor, Plenty of electrons, now they start traveling with a uniform direction of flow. Then what will happen to the magnetism? Now the magnetism, which was previously canceling each other out, will now add up. So whenever there is current flow through a conductor, then we will have magnetism. Why? Because current electrons are traveling in a similar direction, Say, for example, if electrons are traveling from this point to this point, now those billions of electrons that are traveling in a similar direction will contribute tiny magnetic field, which is to be added up because they are aligned in a similar direction. What will be the resultant? Whenever there is current flow through a conductor, then we have magnetic field that is generated around this conductor there will be a magnetic field encircling this conductor. When electrons are traveling in a mass, then there will be magnetism that is encircling through this conductor. Well, the direction of the magnetic field will be determined by the right-hand rule. Now, what will happen to this copper conductor when a magnet is brought closer to the copper conductor? This is a magnet, for example. What will happen to those electrons when a magnet is brought closer. Whenever we bring these magnets together, 
there will be an interaction. Now, this is a magnet. This is also another magnet. Now, what will happen when this magnet is brought closer to this? Look what is happening. See? Depending on the polarity, when one magnet is brought closer to the other magnet, then we have a force that is moving the other magnet. Depending on the polarity, it could either be repulsion or it could be attraction. So, the idea, the idea is, whenever two magnets are brought close together, there is a reaction between, there is an interaction between those two magnets. Now, in a similar fashion, let's bring this co magnet closer to a conductor. Now, what will happen? Well, what happens is, because the electrons have magnetic properties that is encircling them, whenever a magnet is brought closer to a conductor, those electrons, they will migrate to one side. Why? Because whenever magnets are brought together, we have said there is an interaction. In a similar fashion, whenever a magnetic field is brought closer to a conductor, those electrons, because they have magnetic property, they will be affected by the incoming magnetic field. They will either be attracted or they will be repelled to one direction. Let's say, for example, I brought this magnet closer to this conductor. Let's say electrons are migrating to this side. Now, due to the motion of this magnet, the electrons, let's say, they, have, they are repelled to this direction. So what will happen? Those three electrons will migrate to this side. So we have accumulation of electrons on this point where we have scarcity of electrons at this end. What will be the resultant? This end will have plenty of electrons. It will be negatively charged. And this end, because it has a scarcity of electrons, it will be positively charged. So by simply bringing this magnet closer to this conductor, we have generated a potential difference across these two points. So that is how electricity can be generated by using magnetic field. So magnetism can generate electricity. Now, what will happen if I withdraw this magnet and pull it away from this? Electrons which were previously repelled to that side, now due to the motion of this magnet, they will be attracted to this side again. So what will happen? They will migrate from this end to this end. Now we have accumulation of electrons on this end, and we have a scarcity of electrons on this end. This will become positively charged, and this become negatively charged. Then what do we have? We have potential difference between these two points. What do we call a potential difference? Electric potential difference is called voltage. So we have voltage induced on this conductor. So that is the basic principle. It's a basic principle in understanding how electricity is generated by using magnetism. That is the main thing. Now, these kind of alternators, they are getting used to that basic principle. Whenever a conductor is cut by a magnetic field, voltage will be induced on that conductor. That is a basic thing. So this is how voltage is generated nearly in almost all alternators, be it a hydropower generating alternator, be it an alternator of a car like this, be it a, a other type of alternator. The basic principle is you have a magnet, you have a coil, and then when those two are brought closer, whenever there is change of magnetic field around a given conductor, then voltage will be generated. So this is how Voltage is generated on our alternators as well. Now, in order to perform that task, the alternator requires basic components. For example, we have a rotor here. This is a rotor, and we have a stator here. Now, we have said that for electricity generation, we need two things. We need a copper coil. We need a coil on which voltage will be induced. And then, we need a magnet some sort of magnetism that will cause change of flux to induce voltage on the copper winding. Well, when it comes to alternators, when it comes to car alternators, we have both of them. 
This, the rotating part, is the magnet. This is a magnet. And the stationary one, right here we have, it is a coil. So what do we have? We have a rotor, rotating magnet, and then in here we have a coil. Now let's say somehow this is magnetized. Let's say this rotor will be magnetized when electricity is provided to this coil. So what will happen? We have a coil. Let's place it in such a manner. Now look what is happening. Every time I rotate this magnet, the magnetism from these magnetic poles will be inducing voltage on this copper conductor. So that is how voltage is generated, guys. We have a rotating magnet. We have a stationary coil, a stationary copper conductor. So every time magnetism is there, every time this mechanical energy rotates the magnet, the magnetism will induce voltage on this copper conductor. In order to do that, the alternator requires this kind of rotor. This is the one that is rotating and the one that is driven by the crankshaft. Now what do we have inside the rotor? We have a coil. Right in there we have an electromagnetic coil. Now when that electromagnetic coil is energized by passing current through, it will be magnetized. When, when it is magnetized, one pole of the coil will have north polarity and the other will have south polarity. Now in order to power those coils, in order to power that coil, we need to have electrical connections through the slip rings. These are the slip rings that are continuously providing electricity to the field winding. There we have the rotor winding. One end of the rotor winding will be connected to one slip ring. And if I turn it, the other end of the rotor winding will be connected to the other slip ring. So if I can have a continuous electric supply, let's say this is positive and this is negative. If I have continuous electric supply here, this rotor will become a magnet. So there are carbon bricks that are riding on the slip ring, providing electricity to the rotor winding. So every time you turn the ignition switch on, power will be provided, voltage will be provided to this, and it will become a magnet. Now when it becomes a magnet, what do we have? Let's say, for example, this end becomes north pole. So what do we have? We have north pole here. Similarly, this will become also north pole because it is connected to this end. Let's say this one has become North Pole. So every piece that is connected to this will become North Pole. Here also we have North Pole. See? North Pole. Now what do we have on the other side? This side, the ones which are connected to this side, will become South Pole. Here also we have another South Pole. South South, South, South Pole. Now, every time the rotor is rotating, we have an alternating polarity. We have an alternating magnetic field. So whenever this is rotating, whenever the, rota the rotor is rotating, we have an alternating magnetic polarity. See? Now, what will happen to the stator winding. Well, let's say this is the stator coil through which this rotor is to be driven. Now, the rotor will be inserted in such a manner. The rotor will be inserted in such a manner and it will start revolving in here. What do we have on the outer side? We have a stator copper coils. Copper coils. So, let's say the magnet has started revolving in here. So we have a magnet, we have a moving magnetic field, we have a stationary electric conductor. What will the resultant be? Voltage will be induced on this copper conductor. So basically that is how alternators generate electricity. So in a similar fashion, this rotor, when it is powered by electricity through the slip ring, it will become magnetized. 
then what will what will happen to these pieces these iron pieces will become magnetic magnetically energized let's say this is north let's say this is south let's say this is north depending on the direction of current flow south north south so what we have is we have an alternating magnetic field let's say this copper conductor is inside the stator and placed in such a fashion now when this is moving in such a direction magnetic field as fields are theoretically they are emitted from the north and collected to the south so this con copper conductor will be cut by a magnetic field that has a direction flow from north to south this is the direction of flow of the magnetic field that is cutting this copper conductor at this instant then it will start again turning now what will happen right here now we have a magnetic lines of force that is coming in opposite direction see north to south we have a magnetic field that is running in an opposite direction to the previous one so what do we have we have another voltage that is induced on this stator winding but acting in opposite direction if the previous magnetic field was driving electric current in this direction now because the magnetic field direction has changed the current flow direction will also change so we have an AC voltage that is generated on this copper conductor we have AC because the magnetic lines of forces are continuously changing their direction when the rotor is spinning we have AC voltage that will be generated on the stator winding so the magnet will be revolving in such a fashion and we have AC voltage that is generated on the stator winding now the vehicle electrical system however is operated by a DC current we have a direct current requirement for charging our battery and all other electrical loads are direct current operated so how do we fix it we will have rectifiers right here we have rectifier diodes that will change the AC that is produced in the stator winding and convert that AC to DC output and then finally we have a DC output that is coming out of the alternator. So this is basically how the alternator generates electricity. Now in another video, we will be looking at how the diodes convert that AC to DC. We will also have a look at how excitation is controlled and how the voltage output of this alternator is controlled. But for now, this is how the alternators generate electricity. We have a magnet, we have a stationary copper conductor. So every time the magnet is spinning, every time the magnet is rotating, it will generate electricity on the stator winding. Whenever they are brought to a varying magnetic field, whenever electrons are brought to a change of flux area, voltage will be induced on the copper conductor because of the interaction between that tiny electron magnetism and the main magnetic field that is generated by the rotor. So this is basically how alternators convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. And that electrical energy will be taken out through these terminals. We have terminals of this kind. The body will be acting like a ground and we have a positive battery terminal that will come out of the alternator and we take that battery volt that positive terminal from the alternator and connect it to the charging circuit of the vehicle well if you like this video please smash the like button and if you have any comment any suggestion on how this video went please leave it in the comment below and if you have any idea on which you want me to make video if you have any comment regarding the videos that we are presenting please leave a comment in the comment section below well thank you for watching if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified whenever we come up with another video till then stay safe